When it comes to heat pumps and air conditioners, they're actually very similar. Today, I wanted to share my experience with heat pumps and focus on how they operate to give you cooling in the summer and heating in the winter. Many new techs get intimidated when they work in an area predominantly with gas electric systems and then they have to work on heat pumps. The same goes for those who work on heat pumps a lot and then have to work on gas furnaces. It's foreign to those new techs and they feel less confident working on those systems. Today we're going to try and clarify those mysterious thoughts so that you can better understand them. So if you didn't already know, in cooling mode the heat pump works just like an air conditioner in that a 24 volt signal comes to the outdoor contactor to turn that unit on. The contactor switch gets pulled in which allows the 240 volts from the one side of the contactor onto the other side so that the voltage can make its way to the capacitor that supports the compressor and the condenser fan motor. The refrigerant cycles through the system and basically makes the indoor evaporator coil a cold coil and the outdoor units coil the hot coil. At the evaporator coil, a fan blows across the cold coil and sends that cold air into the duct system and onto the rooms of the house. We've removed the heat from the inside of the house at the outdoor unit and pull it to the outdoor coil to be released into the atmosphere. A heat pump just has a reversing valve that reverses the flow of refrigerant to make the indoor coil the hot coil and the outdoor coil the cold coil. So we're trying to extract heat from the outside and bring it inside which can be done down to a certain outdoor temperature. After that, there's very little heat in the air to extract, so heat strips will kick on to supplement that effort. Now, heat strips are a wire coil that is strung out across a rack that sits in the blower motor's airstream. They get so hot, they even glow bright orange. They're great, but they're super expensive to run. A regular occurrence with a heat pump in the heating season is for the outdoor unit to go through a defrost cycle. You can imagine the cold outdoor coil interacting with the cold outdoor temperatures is going to cause some freezing. Anytime that outdoor coil gets below 32 degrees, the cold coil develops frost on it. And it can't keep operating this way or frost will develop into a straight up ice block. So a temperature sensor is mounted onto the outdoor coil to monitor this situation. When enough frost develops on the coil, a defrost board inside the heat pump's control panel will energize, sending it into a defrost signal. Another sensor is included here. It's an ambient temperature sensor. The difference between the ambient and the outdoor coil temperatures is the difference, or delta T measurement. This delta T measurement is what ultimately determines the need to go into defrost. Defrost only works in heating mode, too. Now that the sensor on the outdoor coil has signaled to the defrost board that it's time to go into defrost, a few things are going to happen. The defrost board is the quarterback for this whole play too. Because the outdoor coil was the cold coil and freezing up, we need something to melt that outdoor coil so that it can function properly again. So the reversing valve lets out a big whooshing sound and reverses the flow of refrigerant. So we can essentially go into air conditioning mode again and make the outdoor coil the hot coil. At the outdoor unit, you'll notice that the heat pump's fan motor will stop running too. This is to help warm up the coils faster because if we were drawing cold air across the outdoor coils when we were trying to warm them up, it would be counterproductive. Inside at the air handler, the fan still blows, which means that there's cold air coming out of the ducts. But the air handler's heat strips come on to neutralize the cold air. All this happens until the outdoor coils are warm enough to go back into heat mode and become the cold coil again, maybe 45 to 90 seconds. One last time, the reversing valve makes the big whooshing sound and switches the flow of refrigerant back to the heating mode. The outdoor fan turns on and the heat strips turn off, the indoor coil becomes the hot coil again, and the outdoor coil becomes the cold coil again. Whew. Real quick, I wanted to mention that this method of defrost control is called defrost on demand. Some older systems have defrost cycles that are called electronic time temperature defrost, and basically defrost is started every 50, 70, or 90 minutes, and then has a sensor that tells it to go back into heating mode. Let's get into more of those details about the reversing valve and the defrost board in other videos. For now, I just wanted to go over the sequence of operations that happens for heating and cooling to work on the heat pump system. There are ways to test the reversing valve for diagnostic reasons, 
There are also ways that you can force the unit into defrost when performing a maintenance or a diagnostic call on a heat pump. Another test you can do is test the sensors to see if they're dialed in enough to make the right call to go into and come out of defrost mode. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe and check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.